Thank you, Andrea. Uh, so hello, my name is Jamie Tevan, and I'm a researcher at Microsoft Research, and I do information retrieval work. So that means that I basically try to figure out how people use search engines and then use what I learn from that to build better search algorithms. So pretty much what I'm trying to do is take that short one or two word query that you enter into a search box and using that query identify just a few relevant documents from among the millions and billions of documents that make up the web. So something happened though a few years ago to change the way that I, uh, oh, thank you. Something happened a few years ago to change the way that I think about search. And it happened while I was in Hawaii. How many people have been to Hawaii? Yes, I hope you had a life-changing experience. This was lovely for me. <laughs> so I was there with a friend, and we were driving through Wailuku, and we drove across a street called Keanu Street. And this led into a big discussion about whether the American actor Keanu Reeves was born in Hawaii or not. <laughs> and I don't actually know how these kind of discussions got resolved before the internet. You know, there were probably big arguments. <laughs> Friendships were lost, you know, <laughs> and probably nobody found the answer anyway. Uh, but computers are perfect for this, and it's the whole reason I went into information retrieval research. So Sheila pulls out her smartphone, and I think this is great. She's going to go search for where Keanu was born. But instead, she surprises me, and what she actually does is she texts a handful of her friends and says where, asks where Keanu was born. And within a few minutes, somebody writes her back and says, no, he actually wasn't born in Hawaii, but his father is Hawaiian. And this really changed the way that I thought about search. You know, I think about looking for information as entering a query into a search box. But really, when you think about it, most of the time when you're looking for information, you ask somebody a question. And over the past decade, we've built amazing tools to help people be able to search better. But we, what we haven't done is actually build new tools to really change the way that we're asking questions. And the internet offers, and social networks, offer really interesting opportunities for this. And I predict, as a, as a small revolution, that in the next few years, we're going to see the way that we ask questions change as dramatically as search engines have changed the way that we search information repositories. So my colleague, Meredith Ringel Morris, and I, and a number of other collaborators, set out to try and understand question asking better. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the highlights of what we've discovered, focusing on why people might ask questions rather than search, and also talking a little bit about how the way that we ask questions influences the responses that we, rece that we receive. And if you listen closely, you may actually learn a few tricks to improve your question asking as well. So one of the cool things about online question asking, or that sort of technology enables for us, is in face-to-face -face conversation, we talk to one person and ask a question of one person, but all of a sudden, it's possible for us to ask questions of many people and broadcast our questions broadly. So Sheila, for example, when she was, wanted to know where Keanu Reeves was born, was able to ask a number of friends, and that's the reason we were able to get a response so quickly. Um, and when you look at the way that people use social network sites, like Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, you see that a good portion of the people who use these have actually used these sites at times to kind of mine their friends for information or to ask questions. So Sheila, for example, might have been able to go onto Facebook and say, does anybody know where, uh, where Keanu Reeves was born? And as we get started sort of thinking about question asking, I'd actually like you to think of a question yourself that you might go onto your favorite social network and broadcast to them and get answered. It might be something about a hobby of yours. It might be something about work. You may be planning to travel or doing a purchase. You know, you may be a parent and want to know how to get your kid to stop screaming in the middle of the night. Uh, you may want to know a good restaurant to eat at in Chicago tonight. And that's actually, that's my question. So I would like to know where to eat at um, Chicago. So tell me at a break or go on Twitter and tweet a response to me. It's JT Van. Um, so come up with a question. And then what we've done is we've basically taken all the questions that people have in this room and all the questions that people ask and studied them and characterized them. And one of the things that we've seen that's, that's pretty interesting is actually the kinds of questions that we ask are really similar to the kinds of questions we ask of search engines. So it's the same topics that we're asking our friends and going to search engines for, with a few exceptions. So in general, we kind of keep the questions we ask to cocktail party conversation. We do a lot more searches for things like health or religion or politics than we actually do question asking. 
And I have seen almost no questions asking for porn, and that's the most common search on the internet. <laughs> So anyway, but given, given that there's generally a lot of similarity, it's interesting to think about why somebody might choose to ask their friends questions versus choosing to go to um, a search engine and search there. And we've studied this in a number of ways, but one that I think is kind of fun is uh, we've had people race their friends. So they'll go out and post a question that, of their choosing to their friends and then go search and try and find the answer and see where, whether they can get faster responses. So for example, we had one participant who wanted to know how to tile their kitchen backsplash. And so they posted, this, this gentleman posted any tips for tiling a kitchen backsplash on Facebook to his social network. And then when he did that, he closed the site and he went to his favorite search engine and started searching for uh, information on his own. And so we had people do this with all sorts of different questions. One person's spouse was going out of town, and they wanted some good recommendations for vegetarian recipes to cook while that was uh, while she was gone. Another person wanted to know how to get their uh, in-car navigation system to work. Another person was going to Cancun and wanted some uh, recommendations for places to go there. So hopefully these look somewhat like some of the questions that you thought of too that you might broadcast to your network. Um, and so you can actually do that. Go and post this question and then go search. And you know what the search experience looks like. These are involved questions. People, you know, we told people they could stop whenever they wanted, but generally it took about half an hour for them to feel satisfied with the information that they had found. And after half an hour, we asked them to go back to their social network and see what responses they had gotten. And amazingly, over half of the people had actually gotten a response just faster than they had found the information by actually searching the web. So there's a real opportunity there to get information from your social network. And sometimes people's friends provided the same answers that they had found by searching, but also sometimes people's friends provided information that they hadn't seen before. One, one type of information that people provided that was new and different from what they found from searching was sometimes people provided content that actually wasn't available on the web. So this person asking for vegetarian restaurants uh, a friend of his actually went and typed up their grandmother's handwritten vegetarian recipe and posted that for them. And so that's something that wasn't, didn't exist in digital information. They couldn't have found it on the internet. We had another participant who was going rock climbing in New Zealand, and he got an invitation to sort of couch surf on a friend of a friend's couch. And that sort of information, invitations or offers, certainly can't be found by searching. Another thing that we found people sometimes um, got from their friends that they couldn't have gotten from a search engine was uh, information that they weren't looking for. So you can only find what you're looking for. So one person was, uh, had just done a certification course at work and improved sort of their training, and they wanted to think about their career path at their company and how they might be able to grow in their role. And they were asking for information about that and had searched about sort of the tra career tra trajectory given that certification. But a friend of theirs posted and said, you know what, you should quit and start a consulting company now that you have this certification. And that person actually really liked that feedback. It was something they hadn't even thought about, but that they started considering and started looking for. And one of the things that's interesting about this is actually, you know, we get kind of concerned. You hear people talk about, oh, personalized search. We're going to start living in this bubble where we don't ever see anything we're not expecting. All of our serendipitous connections are going to be destroyed. And what's interesting is, that your friends who provide as personal information as you could possibly imagine are actually increase, can, can increase your serendipity or increase your chance encounters with information because they know exactly what you want even if it's not what you're asking for. And they can create those interesting connections. Another type of response that we see friends give are social responses. So, you know, in asking a question of your network, you're not only looking for information, you're also connecting with people and communicating with them. So, for example, this person who's going to Cancun, now we all know that she's going to Cancun, and she might get responses like, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous, can I come with you? Um, so these are some of the reasons that people might choose to go to, a search, uh, to a, uh, their social network and ask questions of their friends rather than try to use a search engine. You know, they get unexpected content, they get um, unavailable content, and they get social connections. So then what we wanted to do was try and figure out how you can ask effective questions. And to do this, we ran a really fun, controlled study where we had hundreds of people ask exactly the same question. So I might ask everybody in this room, for example, 
to go to the, uh, their social network and post a question, should I watch ET? And then I can control small things and figure out uh, what gets better answers. So I might ask everybody on this half of the room to ask the question in the morning, and I might ask everybody on this half of the room to ask the question in the evening. And then I can learn what, what time of day is it best to ask questions. Or I might look at whether men get different responses from women, or people with large social networks get better responses from small social networks. One thing that I think is particularly fun that we studied too was looking at how questions were phrased and whether that impacted the responses that people got. So half of you guys might ask, should I watch ET? And the other half might ask, does anyone think I should watch ET? And then we would look at how many responses were gotten and how fast and how good they were to see which phrasing is better. And we chose the variants that we used for phrasing based on things that we observed in the way people actually asked questions. So one thing that we observed is the questions people ask are really short. So I know when I go on Twitter and I have 140 characters to type a question in, that feels really constraining. I start having to like write you with just the letter and condense things and cut words. But the questions that we ask of our social networks, on average, are only 75 characters, just over half the length of a tweet. So clearly, we're not using all of that space. We're asking really short questions. So we explored using short questions versus longer questions. Another thing that we found is about 20% of the questions people ask aren't actually phrased as questions. They're phrased as statements. So there are somebody might, we might have half the people say, should I watch ET? And the other half say, I wonder if I should watch ET. And see whether phrasing the question as a question versus a statement makes a difference. One of the things that I really liked also was that people often scope their questions. So even though you might be broadcasting it to your entire social network, made up of hundreds of people, you might direct your question at specific people. You might say, do my Chicago friends have a restaurant recommendation for me tonight? Or in the case of ET, what we studied was, do my movie buff friends think I should watch ET? And people scope to specific groups, but often we use sort of a a useless type, type of scoping where we actually say this anyone here. So one in five questions that people post on their social networks are directed at anyone. Does anyone think I should watch ET? So we also, also studied that. And these are, this is an example of somebody posting the question on their social network. So this person's in a long question condition, so they've got an extra sentence saying taking it easy just to make it a little bit longer. They're in a statement, so, um, so it's, I wonder if I should watch ET, and then they also have that anyone. And these are the types of responses that people receive. So here, Mary received an answer from her friend named Sarah, saying definitely you should watch it. Uh, she also received a response from Stanley getting some ideas about uh, more about IT, like the ET. It's like, don't watch that new one, the 20th anniversary edition, where Spielberg replaced all of the guns with walkie-talkies in that final scene. And one of the things that's sort of interesting about this study was I learned a lot about E.T. So I didn't know Drew Barrymore was a younger sister. I didn't know E.T. was based on Steven Spielberg's imaginary friend that he had when his parents were getting a divorce. There's all sorts of things I learned about E.T. So you can ask me E.T. trivia later. Um, and then you see Matt uh, at the end just gives a social response. And so we, we quantified these uh, responses by looking at their quality, how fast they came, and how many people got. And what we learned was uh, if you ask a question in the morning, you get faster responses. And if you ask a question in the evening, you get more responses and better responses. So I'd probably recommend that you ask your questions in the evening. Uh, we didn't see a lot of differences in the demographics of people who ask questions. We certainly saw that people with larger social networks got better responses and more responses. And that's not that surprising. When your question's being broadcast to more people, you have more opportunities to get responses. As far as phrasing, this one probably doesn't surprise you. We saw that phrasing your question as a question gets you better responses. That's because I, probably because people can actually see that you want a piece of information and you make it obvious. Uh, we also found that scoping the question led to really a lot better quality and quantity and speed of responses. Um, so that was true if you directed your question at your movie buff friends, but it was also true if you just asked anyone. So there's maybe a reason why one in five people say, does anyone know this? It actually tends to get better responses. Uh, we also found that asking shorter questions got better responses, but that the responses were qualitatively different. So when you had additional context, people were less likely to ask for clarifications which is perhaps not that surprising because you have that additional clarification information already in the, in the um, update. 
We also found that people were more likely with the extra context to add, um, to suggest alternatives. So they might say, oh, don't watch ET, go watch Cocoon instead, or something like that. So we, we have a lot of really strong evidence that the way that you ask questions influences the kinds of responses you get. We've also starting to study the way that the initial replies that are given to questions influence subsequent replies. So this is something you can kind of go experiment with your friends and go give particular responses and see if you can get them to have different uh, subsequent responses. Uh, so for example, if somebody answers a question in their first uh, reply, then subsequent re responses are less likely to provide an answer, which sort of makes sense. The answer's already there, and other people can provide more social content or augment that response. We've also found that there's a qualitative trend in the kinds of results, uh, responses that people give. So if um, the first person provides a link as a reply, subsequent responses are more likely to provide links and suggest, you know, if I say, oh, you should visit this URL, then your next friend might say, oh, no, you should really check out this URL. Likewise, if you uh, provide a suggestion that you talk to somebody, your subsequent friends will also suggest that you talk to, some, um, talk to other people. So you can really kind of structure the way that the conversation evolves. So what we've seen is that question asking is an important part of information seeking. And that by asking questions, we can get unexpected or unavailable information and we can build social connections. And we've also seen that the way that people ask questions and the replies that they get influence the subsequent replies that they get. And we're using this knowledge and what we've learned to build tools that help people and algorithms work together to give you the best responses, to give you better responses than either approach can, can do it, um, alone. But while you're waiting for that technology, you can take advantage of some of the things that we've learned today, and you can consider your social network for question asking when you have an information need, and you can ask questions in the afternoon, you can ask short questions, you can make sure they end with a question mark, and you can direct them at anyone. So happy asking. Thanks. <laughs>